Hello and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. This week I'm going to be showing you some micro tactics. Now these are little plays or small decisions that are made in the heat of combat that will allow you to clean up the opposition. We're going to be looking at gameplay footage which I'll break down to show you some of these playing out in real time. If you want to watch me play live and ask questions or just hang out, I am in COVID-19 lockdown for the next two months or so, so I'm going to be streaming live on Twitch every Thursday, and I'll chuck the link in the description below. Let's get started with our first clip. In this scenario, we have picked up the bounty, made our initial scan, which was clear, and then we started moving out across the swamp, when we pick up two hunters behind us in Darkseid. The first point of call is to rapidly get back to dry land, as being caught out in a swamp with our close range loadouts is a very bad idea. When assessing how to access the compound and push in, there are two cracks in the wall on my side. Now I'm a bit ahead of my teammate, so I shift down to the next one so that he can enter the first crack at the same time as I push in. This type of micro positioning is really important in team fights, because you always want to be playing a complementary angle to your partner. Let's look at how this exact thing pays off. My next decision is to switch up for that spiked sniper, a weapon that I consider very strong once you have bounty. I ask my partner if I have time to loot before he pushes. I don't want to be stuck behind and have him die while I'm looting. But why looting combat anyway? It's not like I need my consumables back. Well, I want that second of dark sight, just in case. Now we're about to see our final opponent make a very poor tactical decision, re-peaking the same spot. He was lucky enough to survive the afto, but the mistake gets him in the end. Fuck. Did you get him? Yeah. Good. Let's move on to our next clip. And this one has been brightened up a little bit so all you viewers on mobile can actually see what's going on. We're at the end of a massive multi-team fight at Fort Karmic, and there's only us and one other team left. The first thing to note is the importance of positioning yourself for the refrag, which is when your partner is killed, you're ready to take down the exposed attacker. This is why even though you shouldn't be bunched up with your team, you should be close enough to cover each other when necessary. I know I know, Dolch is OP, and I suspect there's only one enemy left at this point. I'm pretty sure that he has a Nitro Express, and that's a bit terrifying. I can hear where he is, and I decide to go and peek him with that Dolch. Was that your kill, Mary? You see that there? His weapon shoots straight up in the air due to aim punch. You may think that at close range the Nitro is a better matchup with the Dolch, and yeah, it can definitely kill you faster in one hit. However, aim punch levels the playing field because whoever gets the first shot is likely to win. If I peek, I do risk a single Nitro shot ending it all for me. However, I know that I don't even need to see him to make this kill. <laughs> the final point in this clip is to scan before reviving. It's just good practice. This would have been a good match too, except Potter tried to take on a ward devil in CQC on the way out. This of course ended in the expected manner. It's now time for a clip in which there are no kills at all, just some sneaky plays to make a bad situation into a very good situation. It's at Lock Bay Docks. My partner is downed in the boss lair, the assassin is alive but on low health, and there are not one but two enemy teams in the area. I know that one is underneath, and one is over the water to the south. I use my knowledge of the enemy's positions to pick out a safe route. I also need to take into account what consumables I have and how much health the boss is on to make this play. Now we are both alive and on full health, we control the boss lair and the banishing, and we will eventually win this fight, but it's just too long and boring to include here. Now I rarely play quick play, but this game here yielded a really nice micro tactic to share. I have the wellspring and I'm attempting to hold the station house. An enemy is pushing me with a shotgun. I miss two important shots and he charges in. At this point I do have time on my side, he needs to go all out to catch me before the game ends. 
I know this, and I decide to use a trap that I set previously to help me out. Creating a fallback position like this, even when you have to improvise them, can really turn the tide in situations. Remember your fallback points, both for quick play and for bounty hunt. There are certain behaviours that AI only do when responding to players in the area, like that armoured stomping around up there on the balcony. This is also a good lesson in how if you focus on one thing in the middle of your screen, that tunnel vision can delay you from noticing other, really important things on the side of your screen. Yeah, hunters, hunters. If you shoot in a panic, you're often going to miss. You should take cover, take a breath, and hold your nerve. Where did that headshot come from? What was it? Pax. Oh, it was him. Crouching or standing still in combat is usually a terrible idea. But if you can see all the enemies you are fighting, and you can see that they're facing away from you or don't have line of sight, then holding your position can really improve the accuracy of your shot. Nice. You could probably frag him. Before I mentioned holding your nerve, focus on what's important. This grunt is rushing at me, but my opponent knows that as well and I know that he will likely be pushing with the expectation that I am busy with the AI. A Mosin shot to the head proves him wrong about that one. Let's look at one last clip. This starts with a bit of a macro tactic. A duo is in the compound with me. My partner is down and I feel outgunned, so I go for a wide reposition and enter the compound from the other side. This only works because the way that we ended up in this position was extremely chaotic as seen here, so I doubt they realised who my partner was, and this means that they are unlikely to put a burn on him. Dead body here. Oh. Fuck. Get a That's one team dead. That was the one that got me. When stealthing up to my partner, I try and keep tabs on where the enemy is inside the building by listening to footsteps. I'm concerned about the balcony to my right, and also the slide door to the left. The first guy was standing still, so he was easy, but now I'm faced with a split second decision. I am one tap to anything, and he's on full health. I have three options, run, heal, or try for the headshot. If I run, I'm likely not going to make it. If I heal, he can push or even penetrate these wooden boxes in front of me with his long ammo, so I decide to hold my aim at head height and prepare for the peak. Fucking nice. Hopefully you learned something small from each of these clips that might save you in the future. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, and you can also connect with us through our community Discord server linked in the description below. Thank you to our awesome Patreon supporters, and also to all of you guys watching as well. This is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming.